What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto USA and today we're talking about the dome attachment for the B1X, B1, D1, D2. As a matter of fact, actually, I was about to show you the dome attachment, but I sat it down somewhere and... Hey Kate, oh never mind, I see it. On setup, I put it down on the table over there. So. But what we're talking about today is this, the dome attachment for the B1. Uh, and so essentially what it does is it just takes the flat front and it gives you a little bit more throw around the edges so it's not so uh, concentrated in a beam. So the, B, the D1s, the B1, B1Xs, and the D2s all have a 77 degree reflector built underneath this diffusion panel. So it, it keeps the beam pretty tight. The cool thing is, is that the throw is pretty good. So like if I threw, if I throw the modeling lamp on, you can still see that like 180 degrees, I still have a good amount of spill. But the downside is, is that it, um, it you still have a, 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 a pretty good beam on it. So whenever you're dealing with stuff like a big softbox, that beam doesn't matter because once that light goes into the softbox, it starts bouncing all over the place. And it, um, it comes out pretty even, especially whenever you're double diffused because it hits the diffuser, bounces back into the silver, blah, 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 blah. It's all over the place. So big softbox and the big, aren't that big of a deal. Where the dome can and cannot matter sometimes is more with like your hard reflectors, like your magnum reflector or your zoom reflectors. And I'm talking about the originals. I'm not talking about the OCF versions. The OCF versions of your zoom and your magnum reflector were actually built to take uh, all of the light from the flat front and focus it. So if you actually put a dome on with an OCF magnum or an OCF zoom reflector, it's actually less efficient. So if you're OCF magnum, OCF zoom, stay with the flat front, it was built that way. The facets that are actually uh, on, uh, that make up the inside of those reflectors, like I said, are designed to scoop up that flat front and blast it forward. But if you're talking about something more like your traditional magnum reflector, um, you would want to use something like that. It's now the, um, does it make that big of a deal is a different uh, video altogether. And I think we should probably do one where we compare uh, what does it look like with a dome and what does it look like without a dome. And so you can see, especially because I always tend to advocate for using the dome with a beauty dish. I just think it works better, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong about the dome working better with other things. But for the people who just love the dome and love making sure that you're getting that, that spread uh, out of the edges a lot more than you would with... Um, the flat front, then we're gonna show you how to install this thing. Uh, the other thing that people always ask too is, um, is it really change the light that much because the, the flash tube is still recessed inside the flash? Uh, for the most part, no, because you're still shooting into something frosted. So you're gonna, the, the frosting, the opaqueness of it is actually gonna consume a lot of the light and throw it out. It would make it more of a difference if you were using a, a clear, uh, a clear dome, then you would probably want that flash tube um, exposed if you were trying to use something like the hard box. Unfortunately, the hard box isn't compatible with it because uh, we don't make an exposed tube for it. So, but dome, pretty awesome. I'm gonna see if you guys have any questions before I get rocking. Let's see. Daniela, what's up? Sir Matsky, what's up? Hey, everybody in the house. Good day from New York City. Antonio, what's up, brother? Mayor, what's happening? Uh, let's see, Antonio, I love the dome attachment for my B1, D1, especially when I use the Mola Beauty Dish. Yeah, like I said, I think with a Beauty Dish, it probably makes more of a difference uh, than it, than not using it, especially because that deflector can be really inefficient. So I, and, and we'll do it, like I said, we'll do a Beauty Dish comparison where we use dome and no dome, just to really see if that makes that big of a difference. Uh, to me, visually, when I look into the beauty dish with the modeling lamp running, I can see the inefficiency. So in my brain, I'm just like, oh, it's inefficient. So I just pop the dome on there. So let's see. What's up, Rick, Jim, Davor, what's happening? So I'm gonna show you what I consider the right way to install the dome on the B1 or the D1 or the D2 or the B1X. Uh, those are the four uh, flash heads that the dome attachment is compatible with. The B2, you can't remove the glass plate for it and, it's, and it also doesn't work because the, um, the umbrella adapter for it is actually kind of um, etches a notch into the glass. So it doesn't necessarily fit, it's not the same size. So this is, like I said, gonna be just for, once again, B1, B1X, D1, and D2. 
So, on this tight shot of it, what you're going to see whenever you look at the front of uh, your flash is you're going to see that these brackets right here make an upside down triangle. So when you go to remove it, what you want to do is you want to press down with your fingers. And all these little brackets are spring loaded, so pressing down is not going to damage anything. So press it down and with pressure on the glass, you want to start rolling your fingers up. And as you roll your fingers up, as soon as your fingers pass this line, as soon as your fingers pass that line, the bottom's going to pop forward and then you slide it down. And that's how you remove this, the, the, the glass plate. Uh, just so you know, uh, the shiny side goes out when you reinstall it, but you could just reinstall it the exact same way. You just pop the top corners back in, just do everything in reverse, side up and then down, and your glass plate's back installed. Uh, some of the springs can be uh, pressed down a little bit more so it's a little bit harder. So sometimes you might have to go up and back and then maybe like pop this one on the bottom with your, your fingernail or something like that. Just something really, really light just to get it past it. So, but that's how you take the, the actual dome itself off. Before I throw the dome in here, uh, just as a quick reference, this isn't a flash tube replacement video, but I want to show everybody something. So right here uh, is your flash tube. Uh, inside of a B1 and a B1X, that little yellow dot, that's your LED modeling lamp. But you have this little thing right here that looks like a paper clip. It's called your trigger pin. It's the thing that uh, arcs the flash tube and tells it to ignite. So, what people make a mistake in doing, and this is, I have another video called Don't Pull a Pin. This is the pin that you don't want to pull. So you don't want to ever reach in here and just rip this thing out. There's actually two metal bands that wrap around the pin like this, and you want to unfold those metal bands and then pull that flash tube out if you're replacing your flash tube. So, once again, never reach into the flash head of a Pro Photo Flash and just start ripping. So, on the new D2s, we... Um, on some of the D2s, we actually have um, a new design for uh, that trigger pin where it's just a little U-shape and it sits in it. That way you can reach in and pull it out. But if you look inside one of these flash heads and you see that paper clip right there with those two metal bands wrapped around it, do not pull that out without unwrapping those metal bands. Okay, cool. So like I said, this is not a flash tube uh, video. I just wanted to show you that so you could see it. So now when you install the dome, the dome actually has a metal band around it, so you can see right here. And that's what we're going to use uh, to place into those springs. So once again, just like if you're putting the flat glass plate back on, you're just going to pop the top in, just like that, slide it up, and then down. And you're, you're locked in. The dome's ready to rock and roll. So it's, it's that simple of a, of a process. So I don't, I don't really know what to say after that. So, and then when you uninstall it, you're gonna uninstall it the exact same way, just like you would do with the glass plate. The nice thing about uninstalling the dome is you can actually grab the dome, which is really, really cool. Um, the glass plate, you know, it may be one of those things, especially if you have uh, butterfingers, that you might want to actually put your flash down on like a table and do it where the gravity is kind of supporting you a little bit. That way you don't drop and uh, break your deflector plate. It's always good. Uh, we always recommend that you, and my oily fingers on this thing, it's, um, we always recommend that you have the uh, diffusion plate or, or some sort of protective cover on your flash just in case there's some uh, catastrophic failure of the flash tube. You don't have any like, you know, glass shooting out at your subject. That would be awful. Um, so, but that's how the dome's installed. So let me see if you guys have any questions while we're, t while I'm, what's up? Devor from Stuttgart, what's happening in the house? New lights coming soon from Profoto will be, I have no, we already have a B10, man. I don't know what to tell you. Um, what about the 3x4? So, same thing with the 3x4. The only, um, the only time that I think the dome probably is a little bit better to softbox if you're using like a 1x6 strip. I use uh, my B10 with a 4x6 all the time with the flat front because you can't remove the you can't remove the glass cover on the front of the B10. So I use that with a 4x6 all the time and it fills it great. The 1x6 is a little tougher, I just in my opinion, because it's so narrow, obviously one foot by six foot, so you're not getting as much stuff bouncing around it. So I think the dome's a little um a, may, I wouldn't say imperative. You're definitely going to get the look of the one by six, but I think if you're going, you know, trying to get a little more even end to end, I think the dome is probably going to be one of your best moves. Uh, 
either way, it should work fine. So let's see. Let's see. Great tip. When I had one I was removing incorrectly. Atlanta in the house. Yes. I'm Atlanta all day long. Uh, I'm actually in Atlanta. That's where I live. So hopefully that was really, really cool. It's um I see I've seen lots of people like trying to take like multi-tools and all these things, try to jam these things together. And the problem is if you slip and you, you know, you nick that flash tube, one, it could just straight up break it, or two, it could drop the life of it significantly. So I think doing that the right way is a really, really big deal, especially if people want to use the dome. And the dome's awesome. It's, it's a cool little attachment just to have uh, with you um, in your arsenal. I, I always have one around, like I said, just in case I want to use it on a beauty dish. Really, for me, the beauty dish is, um, is where it shines. The, I've used the Magnum, uh, the, the old school Magnum reflector, big one with and without it, even though you can see the efficiency inside the reflector itself. When I actually look at, at the photos, I couldn't tell the difference. And, and me and Andrea Beluso spent like two days in a studio and we were just like going back and forth trying to see if we could tell her or not. And like I said, even though you could see it in the efficiency, like when you looked at the modeling lamp, um, when, the, when the flash, I mean, the flash is so powerful and, and so much energy that it just, once again, bounces all around, fills it up, and it does a pretty good job. So, but we can do that again on another date, just so you guys can see that kind of stuff. Uh, I just wanted this to be here so you could see how to get uh, either one to your flash tube uh, by taking off the cover, or if you wanted to install the dome yourself. So let me see if you guys have any other questions before I sign out of here. Uh, what's the difference in light quality with and without the dome, or is it mainly for filling larger modifiers more evenly? Um, so your larger modifiers, if you're talking soft boxes, like I said, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Uh, where I think it makes the biggest difference in a soft box is gonna be with a one by six, and that's just so you get some more evenness towards the ends. The big soft boxes, like I said, I've used a four by six dome and no dome, and I can't tell the difference. So, and it's, maybe I'm blind. Maybe I just can't see what I'm actually looking at. But to my eyes, uh, that do have to wear glasses sometimes, uh, it doesn't make that big of a difference inside of a soft good. Once again, I think where the dome shines is in a beauty dish. So if you make your money with a beauty dish, you might want to look into this. Uh, if you've never used the dome and you're doing just fine, don't get the dome. Uh, I just, for me, because I can, I know what a beauty dish is doing with that deflection plate. It's really, really inefficient light source. A gorgeous light source, but really inefficient. I like knowing that I can throw the light straight out of the sides. So that's a light quality difference is you're just gonna get more spread overall with the, the flat front. If you're just shooting uh, dead on, you have a 77 degree spread, which is gorgeous and it's gonna cover a lot. The diffusion uh, plate on the front of it too keeps that light really, really even, which is great. Uh, you're just gonna have more throw, like if you're trying to light up a bigger area all at one time, you could throw the dome on there. Uh, and that's going to change that. As far as uh, harsh, uh, not harshness, because the diffusion does a good job of, of evening out the light, but as far as the hardness of the light, they're going to be pretty similar because they're still, um, you know, you still about to have, have about a 100 millimeter opening right here uh, that is going to keep the light source relatively the same size. So obviously further back, nothing's really going to change that. This is just going to spill more, essentially. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Shooting all mode photos, this probably isn't needed to. I shoot bare bulb with 2B1s and it works very well. Detail shots, use soft boxes. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, if you're shooting a whole bunch of stuff and you're getting the shots the exact way you want, it's not that big of a deal. Once again, like I said, for me, it shines with a beauty dish uh, and that's where I use it. If you see me shooting anything else, uh, I usually always have the flat front. Just because for one, if I'm traveling, the nice thing about having the flat front is, you know, if something, you know, heaven forbid happens and my light falls, um, I would rather, you know, I'd rather take a housing crack and still be able to, you know, keep shooting than to lose um, the front of my flash. So that's kind of the cool thing is I've dropped, I think I've dropped like three B1s on location shoots. And uh, I mean, I've, I've had one where I just blew up the whole back of it. Like all you could see was circuitry and buttons uh, and it kept shooting, which is awesome. So that's why I really like the flat front. So unless I'm beauty dish on location, uh, I'm usually always flat front. Let's see. Do you have somewhere on record sample shots to see the difference between flash with and without dome? Uh, Gene, I don't. Um, I, hope, I hope I said your name right. Jean, Gene, I don't know. I've been known to butcher that name. Uh, I don't have any sample shots on uh, the inner. I think, I don't, I don't even know what Andrea and I did with all of our shots. They were, they, they shot them at his computer. You message him. 
Um, but uh, what we'll do is we'll do another live where we do it ourselves here in the studio and we'll compare them. I'll, we'll have a model in here and we'll do it side by side. You can see it with and without the dome and you can actually decide. We'll, you know, I'll blow it up high res so you can look in and see what things look like. I'll even share the photos in the comments too so you can, you can tell. And, uh, and hopefully we can do it in some way that it's a little more blind. That way, um, you know, you're not obviously thinking of it like, oh, I definitely like the dome one better. So we'll figure out how to do it, but I think it'll be a really, really fun experiment. So once again, this was just so you guys could see how simple it was to take off the glass deflector and install the dome. And so once again, if you want, if, if you're just joining us, I'll show you again really, really quickly before I sign off here by uninstalling the dome and putting the glass deflector back on. So once again, you have three clips that make an upside down triangle. So what you're going to do is you're going to reach, grab the dome for this example, grab onto the dome, push up while pressing in towards the flash. The bottom will pop out and the dome pops out. That's simple. And then when we want to put the glass deflector back in, shiny side out, pop the top right there into those clips, press up and then press down to seat it back into that bottom clip and you're done. That's how simple it is to install the flat front diffuser and the dome. So hopefully that was some cool information. I'm going to see if you guys have any more questions before I get out of here for the weekend, but I do appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. Let's see. All good, all good, all good. Sweet. No more questions. So thank you guys so much for coming and kicking it with me. Um, have another live next week. Uh, hopefully we're going to pump, be pumping out some uh, more awesome content for you guys. If you have any questions, if you want to see anything in particular, shoot me a message. You can shoot it to me uh, on Facebook. I'll respond to anybody and everybody. Uh, you could drop it in the comments section. We'll go back and look at that stuff. So just let me know what you want to see and we'll do a live about it. It's, this is for you. This is not for me. Uh, I know how a lot of this stuff already works. So uh, in the meantime, have an awesome weekend. Hopefully you shoot some cool stuff. Um, we'll see you next time.